I want us to sing something, but before we do, I want to ask the guest, sometime during the service, if you're visiting for the first time, sometime during the service today, would you take that guest registration card in the chair in front of you, and sometime during the service, just fill it out. My wife and I, at the end of the service, will be under the TV, out in the foyer, and uh, if you'll give us that card, we got a gift for you, and we just want to tell you thank you for being here today. All right? Hey, look at somebody, turn to somebody and say, I want to be just like you when I grow up. Do that. <laughs> to glorify you, to encourage the saints. And Lord, I pray that collectively we'll just declare your goodness. Lord, we need your presence today. I pray that this just won't be a time that we've come just because we always do it this way. Lord, I pray you would meet with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you can be seated. We're doing things just a little different today, which is really not unusual for us at Riverview. But I, I'm going to ask you if you would take your Bible and turn to the New Testament book of Hebrews. The New Testament book of Hebrews is toward uh, the, the end of the New Testament. A few books before you get to the book of Revelation. And I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, I, uh, <clears throat> I just can't let the day go by without just sharing just a few comments about what God did in and through you this past week. And as your pastor yesterday, I was drawn to these two verses. I just want to read those verses, make a few comments, and then uh, we'll have our friends from Teen Challenge to come. But uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, For God is not unjust, so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward His name, in having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence 
so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I was drawn to this verse that God, God does not forget. He does not forget your work and the love which you have shown toward the saints. I want to tell you this past week was a was a work. It was hard work. And anybody who participated can let go of the fact that at Bible school it was hard work. I want to make a few comments, but you guys, y'all are talented enough to multitask, okay? I'm going to ask you to listen to what I have to say, but also look at the pictures uh, from Bible school this week. On Sunday night, I think we had 81 children here. On Monday night, we had 123 children here. On Tuesday night, we had 110 children here. And on Wednesday night was family night. We had children and parents and grandparents, and I think there were 5,000 people here on Wednesday night. It seemed like it anyways. And uh, what blessed my heart is that we had such an abundance of workers. And the writer of Hebrews says it's work and it's love. Can I share with you that we can work, but if it's not motivated by love, then it's of no effect. If it's not motivated by love, God will not take uh, notice of it. But when you combine work, which is motivated by love, the writer of Hebrews says, God won't forget about that. And I believe in the uh, quarters of heaven that God was applauding the work of you, the saints at Riverview Baptist Church this week. It was work, it was a labor of love. I want to tell you that several, several, several children prayed and asked Jesus Christ into their heart this week. Over the next two weeks, we're going to be following up with them and talking with their parents. And I want you to pray about that. Some uh, go to churches elsewhere. That's where they need to continue to go and be baptized in their home church. Some do not go to church anywhere. Would you pray that God would continue to open wide the doors of opportunity for us to be able to reach them so that we can help them to grow spiritually? The writer of Hebrews says, For God is not unjust as to forget your work and your love, which you have shown toward His name. That means that the work motivated by love was all an opportunity to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus and to put the spotlight on Him and to magnify His name and make His fame greater. And Riverview, that's what you did this week. That's what you did this week. And it says we worked and it was motivated by love for the glory of God in having ministered to the saints. You, you know what minister means? It, the word minister simply means to meet someone else's needs. That's what ministry means. Now, I know that a lot of people refer to a pastor as a minister. But the fact is, the Bible says we're all ministers. We're all called to meet the needs of others. And I just want to tell you, this week you did that. My heart is so full as a pastor. And I just can't say it adequately enough. But just to say thank you for what you've done. So many... You know, it, it takes an army, really, and that's what happened this week. And as I've said before, we are better together. And as uh, Paul talks about in Corinthians, we're part of one body, but we have many parts. There's many parts. And so you did what you can do for the glory of God to minister to the saints. Kids' lives were changed. Kids were encouraged. And God received the glory, and God will not forget how you invested in the lives of children this week. I just want to ask you, if you participated in any way in Bible school, if you were here during the week, 
or you were not here, but maybe you brought food, or maybe you helped set up, or maybe you helped clean up on Wednesday night, or you prayed uh, about VBS from the from your own home. Uh, if you participated in any way in Bible school, perhaps you brought food. Uh, to the campus. If you participated in any way, would you just slip your hand up? And uh, in the first service, it was the same way. I'm just telling you to God be the glory. Great things He has done. And as I close, just this devotional thought, I, I'm telling you, I just was so excited about what the Lord did. And the writer of Hebrews says, your work, motivated by love, brings glory to God as we minister to the saints as we help meet the needs of others. And here's what he says in verse 12. Do not become sluggish. You, you know what that word means. It, it means lazy, right? And here's what the writer of Hebrews is saying. He's saying, listen, take a rest. We ought to rest, okay? We've got some on vacation today. Listen, you ought to go on vacation, but when you're in town, let's gather here at Riverview and brag on the Lord. You, you ought to rest and you ought to relax. But the writer of Hebrews says, let's don't fall in the trap of resting on past victories of what God's done this week. But it's almost as if the writer of Hebrews becomes a coach and he says, listen, don't become sluggish. Don't get lazy. Keep pressing on for the glory of God. And Riverview, I just want to challenge all of us. Get some rest, all right? Obviously, it was a long week and a hard week. Many of you are tired. Get some rest. But I want to tell you, we're going to keep on keeping on for the glory of God. And as long as God gives us opportunity, and as long as we're taking a breath, I want us as a church family to say, God, we just want to get in on what you are doing. And on the video, you can see what God was doing. And to God be the glory, great things He has done. And again, as your pastor, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also, another thing that happened this week was uh, the boys and girls took up an offering and uh, to support the orphanage that Brother Jerry has started and, uh, and begun and, and kids without parents, uh, they're living there at the orphanage and they're going to school there. And the boys and the girls, and I know parents, you kicked in and all that. And uh, but the boys and the girls brought $800 uh, to give to Jerry Spencer Ministries and to the orphanage there. And so a lot happened this week. And again, to God be the glory great things He has done. I'm thankful for you, and I'm thankful for God, how God used you this week. And if you agree with those sentiments, can we just thank God for what He did here this week. And He did it in the you. And God bless you. Hey, this morning, we're proud to have our friends from Team Challenge. Boy, did they minister to us in the first service. They're going to sing a little bit. They're going to testify a little bit. And you're going to see what God is doing in the lives of men. So Riverview, help us make welcome our friends from Team Challenge. Savannah, Tennessee, and we are honored and just grateful to be here. And uh, I got to be honest, Pastor, when when I heard it was two services, I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" And then you told me the first one starts at 8:15, and I was like, "Oof, <laughs> that. you got to wake up pretty early all through the week, and then they have to get up that early on Sunday." But we made it through it, and, and it was a blessing to to be able to minister this morning uh, in the first service. So. And we are, we're, we're just so grateful to do it again. So we, uh, like I said, Adult and Teen Challenge from right here in Savannah, Tennessee. We, if you don't know the story of Adult and Teen Challenge, in 1958, David Wilkerson was in his study reading a, a Life magazine. And on the cover of that magazine was a story about some teenage boys that were on trial for murder in New York City. 
and he felt the call of God to go to New York and help those boys. Now the Bible tells us that we're to go to Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and all parts of the earth and be witnesses. And for his part of the earth in that moment, it was New York City. And so he went and it didn't go well the first time. He uh, kind of got left out of the courtroom and, and he uh, went back to Pennsylvania with his tail between his legs. And, and God said, I'm not finished and you're not finished either. You need to go back. And so the next time he went back, he was able to reach Nikki Cruz, one of the most hardened gang members. Uh, in, the, in the whole city at that time, and once he reached Nikki with the gospel, there was a domino effect. He, he, he led several, several uh, young people to the Lord, and from that one act of obedience, the first Teen Challenge Center was formed, and now here we are 64 years later, and there's over a thousand worldwide. So I want to tell you that uh, we, we love this church, and, and when I was in the program four years ago, I think this was probably the first church I testified at. And I remember reading a letter uh, that my daughter, my eight-year-old daughter at the time, had wrote me when I came into the program. And she was really trying to, she wanted to get some things. Um, she wanted to hear some grievances that she had with her dad. That was a hard letter to read, um, but I'll tell you, it motivated me. It motiv motivated me through the program. And, and to continue on after the program. And, um, here's, here's how Jesus works. The redemptive scarlet thread of Jesus. That letter was saying, Dad, I, I want you to know how I felt when you were struggling, when you were in your addiction. But just the other day, my daughter, out of the blue, said, Dad, I, I just think it's amazing. And I said, what's that? Like? She said that you knew that you needed help. You went and got help. And now you get to help other people. And that was one of the most proud moments I've ever had as a father and as a man. And that, that wouldn't have been possible without Adult Teen Challenge. It wouldn't be possible without your support. We are a small center in a small town. And typically, uh, Teen Challenge centers are found in big cities under the umbrella of large churches that can financially support them. And, and honestly, when this ministry started 20 years ago, Miss Diane will tell you, it, they, the experts, the pundits and naysayers said it won't work. You, you can't have a Teen Challenge Center in a town of 7,000 people. It doesn't work. Well, what man said couldn't, God said will, and here we are, 22 years later. So once again, thank you. We've got some testimony to share with you and some songs, so we're going to get right into it with our first testimony. It's from uh, one of our guys that's been in the program for a, a, the longest, one of the longest times, and he's an intern with us. Uh, his name is Bobby. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bobby Ballard. I'm from Milan, Tennessee. I'm 49 years old. I usually pray before I do my testimony, so I'm going to do a prayer if that's okay. Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord, as humble as I know how, Lord, just asking you to please guide my words and my speech, Lord, so that I can glorify you and not my addiction, Lord. I just thank you for all you've done in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, I said my name is Bobby Ballard. I'm 49 years old. Uh, I was born in Cedar Grove, Tennessee, uh, with my mother and my stepfather. I was raising me and everything until my mother died when I was nine. So then I moved from Cedar Grove to Kent, Tennessee, the home of the White Squirrels. And uh, once I got there, I didn't want to be there, so I ran away several times because I didn't feel loved. Even though they showed me love, I didn't feel loved because I wanted to be back with my stepdad. So I ran away several times, and I eventually started stealing from my uncle. Started stealing drinks and stuff, and so my drinking addiction started when I was like eight years old, which is 41 years ago. Started drinking and everything, and then I started getting involved in the wrong activities in school and stuff. And I eventually helped a guy rob the gun store when I was 18 years old. But uh, that family guy said I didn't want to stay with me, praying for me all that time. And so the God blessed me that I didn't have to go to prison. They let me go to the U.S. Army. I went to the U.S. Army, but I didn't do what I was supposed to do there, so I eventually got kicked out for, for the dishonorable discharge. I came back to Tennessee and uh, eventually got started on crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, crack cocaine addiction lasted 26 years. It cost me to lose a lot of things. 
It cost me to lose my first marriage. It cost me not to be there with my daughter's birth. It cost me to lose a lot of respect for people in my family. I left Tennessee and went to Kansas City, Missouri thinking that I would be okay, but I didn't realize I was taking myself with me. So I got there and I continued my drug addiction. But God has blessed me. Since I've been back in Tennessee, uh, God has allowed me to have a relationship with my daughter again. You know, the daughter, I wasn't there for her birth. Uh, she came to see me last weekend on Father's Day. I got to spend three days with my daughter. And uh, she told me, she said, Dad, I've never been this proud of you in my life. So I know God is working. You know, I know that this program has truly helped me and has blessed me. You know, I cry a lot in this program, but these guys behind me, they give me support. They let me know that I'm not by myself. You know, they're a family to me. You know, um, I like the verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean upon your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He'll make your pathway straight. You know, I know that the Lord is making my path straight if I just continue to trust in Him and keep Him first. Um, since I've been here at Adult Teen Challenge, which I got here on October 21st of last year, since I've been here, I've been truly blessed with a group of guys that love me and support me and let me know that no matter what I'm going through, I can make it if I just stay focused on the Lord and trust in Him, like I said. Uh, another verse I like is Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first in the kingdom, His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I can truly say today I'm seeking His kingdom because I know that His kingdom is where I have to be. I have to believe in Him, and He's going to add all these things back to me. Since I've been here, I've experienced a few sit letdowns and stuff. I've received divorce papers from my last wife. Uh, but I know that God can restore that. I believe in that. I believe that God will restore that as long as I do my part and trust in Him. And uh, I'm just very grateful to be here today. And uh, I just know that God is truly working in this program, you know, and I like to think. Ms. Lisa Brown, who was the person that got me involved in the team challenge, so that we found out about Mr. Joe Force. You know, since I've been here, they gave me love, support, and everything, and I'm just grateful that I'm proud.
That's redemption. That went a lot better in the second service than in the first one. So let me tell you a little bit about our program. We are a, a one-year uh, rehabilitation program. That means that uh, the guys come and they stay with us for an entire year. Uh, we found out that 28-day programs, three-month programs, they, they don't work. They don't work. The longer when you're struggling with addiction, the longer, the better. That you can be in a safe place. Like, like we put them in here, they're kind of in a bubble. They don't have social media, they don't have access to TV, the news, they don't hear about all the garbage that's going on right now with the world. Um, they're immersed in God's Word. And, uh, and because of that, we're, we're, we're not really a rehabilitation program, we're a discipleship program. Um, they're becoming soldiers in the Lord's army. Amen. Yeah, and we know that the only true way to deliverance from, from anything is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's what they're learning here. So our next testimony is going to be from, uh, I guess you're still the youngest guy in the program. It seems like you've been in here for longer than a year. Tyler, come on.
Israelite people, men, women, and children, some old, some young, across that river. And I don't know if you realize how big the Jordan River was, but it's you know bigger than the Mississippi in, in width and depth. But just like he did for George Washington, God made a way for all of them to cross over into their promised land, into their destiny. And so when these men come into Team Challenge, they're facing their own rivers. It's that thing that's bound them and kept them for so long. It's that addiction that they face. But as they go through this process of Team Challenge, God is gradually taking them across that river into freedom. Now I tell them all the time that the cross of Calvary is the river. And on one side of it is judgment and condemnation and chains and bondage and guilt and shame. But the Bible tells us in Colossians 2.14 that when Jesus took the cross, he took all of that and he nailed it to the cross with him. And he's placed us on the other side. And on the other side is grace and goodness and full of joy, fullness of joy and an eternal promise. Amen. And from this side of the cross, it is a majestic view. Yes. Yes. So our next testimony is from a, from a man that has seen the depths of hell that most of us probably never have. But God placed him on the other side of the cross. Jeremy, come on up. How are you doing, church? Okay. All right, let's pray real quick. <clears throat> Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Father, rest in the Holy Spirit. Come to the room and be amongst us right now. Give me the words to speak, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, I told you all once before in the first service that <clears throat> without even knowing it, you are a testimony right now. We're sitting here in the pews right here uh, for me. Just to uh, see on the other side of life, I said uh, I used to be a, a bad guy, but now I'm a good guy, thanks to God. But just being in church every day and coming and doing the God, you know, just, just being faithful in the words that you, you know, read about in the Bible, you know, just coming and attending God's word. So like the pastor said, and it was, uh, I believe it was uh, Hebrews 6 and or 10, right? Okay, he said that, uh, he said that God is not unjust. You will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So if you're helping me right now, I don't even realize it, you're giving me a, a, a viewpoint from the other side of things. So um, I want to glorify God and say Jesus is good. Jesus has done a lot in my life. Uh, you don't know me. I'm from Louisiana. I'm born here in West Tennessee. Uh, my words weren't together a lot, so I tried to slow it down. Someone told me earlier that they heard me, but they didn't understand what I was saying, so I will slow it down, right? <laughs> Sorry, it's so in West Tennessee, Louisiana, from South Louisiana, from Baton Rouge. Uh, born in Jackson, Tennessee. I have family here in West Tennessee. I was uh, raised in Sardis, Tennessee when I was a little boy, and the rest of the time in Louisiana. And I met more people from Louisiana in this church than I've been anywhere since I've been somewhere, you know, since I started teaching child. Uh, I wanted to, to read something. My mama said that my testimony had to change the time I give it, you know, so because of God is continually working in my life all the time. <clears throat> and I used to be ashamed of teen child, and I told the people in the first service uh, because I was uh, 42 years old and I was just uh, really for a young man and I should know better. And, uh, but now I'm, I'm thankful for teen child for their services and what they do in my life. Uh, like he said, this is a discipleship program. Uh, Nothing to be ashamed about. It's not a rehab program. This is a soccer program for Jesus. Jesus is our risk restoration, our rehabilitation. He's the one who takes care of everything. You know? um, so I'm gonna go ahead. I was I was praying to God, asking for something. You know, so uh, I want to say a couple of things right here. And the Holy Spirit leading me right here. You know, and Matthew. Well, first of all, I'm just gonna say in Matthew 18 and 20 it says where where uh, where two or more are gathered together. You know, he's in the midst. Am I right about that? 18 and 20. Matthew 18 and 20 says, with two or more gathered together in the midst. You know, so Jesus is right here right now. You know, so I believe that. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe he's in my life. He's in his brother's life behind me. Um, also, it says another part of Matthew. says, what did you come to see when he's talking about John the Baptist? You come to see a reed, you know, shaking in the wind. What did you come here to see? If you come to see Teen Challenge, if you come to see a bunch of broken, busted, disgusted type of dudes. You know, and he's going to talk about the past life and the drug addiction because we've been delivered from that. And so we're just walking that course and staying steady to it. You know, the higher calling of Christ Jesus, you know, and keeping our eyes on that prize and fighting for that, you know, the, you know, since he, what the Paul says, I, you know, I'm running, but I'm not perfected yet, I'm still running to try to, you know, to achieve that, you know. Um, anyhow, I wrote a testimony, I don't know if I ain't brought it up here, but let me see, here it goes. 
Um, um, so I'm going to read it, read it to you. I prayed about this testimony, you know, 40, 45 people today, me and God went through this, and I was one of the less of me and more of him. Um, <clears throat> I got a scripture that I stand on. It's uh, called it's Proverbs 24 and 6, and it says right here, By wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Um, there is in verse 6, you know, it says that in your own war, each of us has his own war. You have your own battle to fight, you know what I mean? Um, you need wise and frequent counsel. I didn't ever listen when I was coming up as a kid. You know, you always was a kid, so I know this, daddy, I know that mom, or I know whoever was your, you know, mentor, and I didn't know nothing. Um, so let me go ahead and start off and say before, you know, I've got 23, 24, 25 years of making a bunch of bad mistakes, and I can turn around here and you can imagine a cabinet, and I can just pull a chapter out of my life and something in June of this, you know, 12, 15 years ago, and I can tell you about all the drug uses. I've been using drugs since I was 15, and I've been probably on every drug that wasn't the only except for I never had no IV use problems, but I still was on drugs. And let me say something to you. Addiction is addiction, and just because it's like mine or known, you know, you can have an addiction in your life and not be raped in society or race addiction from zero to ten. I guess drugs and pornography or blah 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 might be you know a ten or nine or whatever, but you know addiction is an addiction though. So um, God can deliver you from the addiction, but it's a right here mine's in front of me, I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, say I had an addiction, I'm not an addiction anymore. The devil's trying to destroy me, he's trying to destroy all of us. That's just that's what he's got here to do. Um, let me just go on and tell you how you tried to destroy me recently. I just did five years in federal penitentiary in the USP Atlanta and uh, destroying all the drugs in there. And I hadn't been home. I, I just got out of prison in March. Uh, um, I stayed out for a week and come to Teen Challenge. Uh, I had done the same thing over and over and over again. I've been in prison four times. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, you know, they say insanity is so doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results. So I come home, my family and I got together. Remember the wise counsel, my family is my counselor, they love it. I was nothing wrong, nothing happened to me. So I counseled them and said, let's try something different. I said, well, let me try to go to Teen Challenge and I want maybe they'll teach me how to, to uh, get off drugs. And so I got the Teen Challenge and I went out so job of shame. Well, it wasn't about it. There wasn't no 12 steps and there wasn't no uh, ever, uh, whatever you might think the rehab is supposed to be. This is a, a restoration through Jesus program. And so um, I found out real quick that, that uh, I didn't need a 12 step program. I didn't need a, a, a Malibu's. What is, where'd you go to? Malibu's? Whatever. Uh, Buddy already wants some Malibu program. I don't know. That. We don't need that. You know, we just need Jesus. So, so while uh, I said I would tell you a little something about me, when I, when I was in prison, I was growing on drugs for four and a half years. I started, we started the gang in prison and I was enforced for two years. And then I shot called for two years. You know what I mean? And in the midst of all that, I kept telling my buddy, you know, I was even serving God in there, but it's, it's just kind of iffy, you know, and I don't say you can't serve God and still be doing drugs and doing bad things to people, but it just doesn't work that way. You know? I mean, I kept telling my buddy, hey, man, the more I do this stuff, the worse off I feel like I'm just sliding away from God. And that happens in the world. And instead, of course, you want to slide, 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 but boom, you don't even, you know, you don't remember where you started from, you know. And uh, something happened in prison for me that changed my life. And uh, God moved from that place. And so I started off my testimony by just saying, have you ever been sick and tired of being sick and tired? I know some of y'all here have been tired of being sick and tired. Uh, just because you're sitting there here doesn't mean that we're any better than each other. You know what I mean? So I'm just on this side, you know, kind of giving you a bunch to my life a little bit. Uh, I have a good family, and I, and, uh, I am a good person. Uh, most people would say they're a good person. You've got to kind of be aware of that. I'm a good person with Jesus Christ, okay? So... At 42 years of age, I've had many chapters in my life to choose from. I made a long life of bad decisions, hardships, and self-inflicted and hard times, and let me have the enemy explore every last bit of it, every minute of it. You know, the enemy is out to get you. He says he's wrong. He says walk through your wrong, but he's seeking someone to devour. So and once he can exploit your weakness, he's going to explore it to the very last, very last minute of it, until you stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You have no meaning over me. I cover myself from the blood of Jesus. You know what I mean? You can't cross that blood line. You know? I used to, uh, he ain't gonna do it to me anymore. I'm choosing Jesus these days, you know. So I began my saying that Jesus found me in 1999. I was saved in 1999. And in the last 23 years, I messed up, vaccinated, and rededicated my life. I know some of y'all can relate to that. Uh, many, many times with Jesus, but yet still I am. Jesus is still, uh, you know, still standing beside me. He's, he's still working on and shaping the mighty mold in me. You know, he's still being patient with me. Uh, I'm not supposed to preach to you, I'm only supposed to testify, and really a testimony is supposed to be telling the truth and 
and they, you know, five minutes, you know, because after that, there's people's attention span time because I, you know, they can't keep up with you no more, so. Yeah. Uh, but listen, so, in my past life, this was the kind of the theme of it, right? I remember, I, this is not superficial, something I read out of a book, whatever, it's something I asked God, and we wrestled, I wrestled with God, trying to keep my flesh with him, and say, who about this and who about that, you know? Drugs, prison, and family betrayal, this is the theme of my past life. I used drugs from the age of 15 to 41. I've been in prison four times. I've been in jail more times than I can count. And most of them I'm ashamed of because I betrayed the ones that love me the most of my family. The family's the ones that stay by you, you know what I mean? And some of us may not have a family to stay by them, but you know, God will stay by you. I mean, I'm sure each one of you sitting here knows someone or has a loved one can relate to my story. And if you don't know someone or have a family member that's in this kind of turmoil, then God has truly blessed you, in my opinion. And I wouldn't wish this past lifestyle for anybody, you know. Uh, any kind of addiction, I don't wish it upon nobody. It's just consuming the thing in your mind. You, know? you don't even have to be on drugs to be consuming your mind with some sort of addiction. It could be social media, it could be pornography, it could be on your phone too much, it could be eating, it could be all kinds of stuff. It could be shopping, you know. 100% of my life choices with me, you know, we, have, we all have a choice. The Bible says there's a path that seems right to a man, but the end is death. This verse is seen a few times in the book of Proverbs and, and may mean many, many things to different folks, but it has a couple meanings to me. You know, like it says, what seems right is a bad choice to end your life physically and even worse spiritually. And this ain't a game here, man. The, the devil's out to destroy, you know, this is a heaven and hell issue. For real, this is, uh, you know, when we pass away, you know, this it becomes like, you know, a heaven and hell issue spiritually, you know. Physically is nothing. It's just for a moment, spiritually for eternal. I can tell you a lot about my past and the flesh would love that. I won't allow any glory to be given to the flesh, the world, or its passion, but what I would do is glorify God and what he's done for me. And before I do, let me just say the choices. You know, we all choose. My dad tried to tell me about choices, and I wouldn't listen. My dad was right, you know. We have choices, but you may have to choose all the time. You know, you don't choose a lot today, but you're not even realize it. Um, we choose right or wrong, priority over pleasure. Sacrifice over self, you choose life or death, you choose the world or God. You know, for me, I chose the world for a long, long time, you know, but now I choose Jesus. Um, I also like to thank y'all for allowing me to give my testimony, you know, me, taking the time to hear what I got to say, you know, because you could be somewhere else today. Here in Teen Challenge, one of our best songs we sing is called My Jesus. The main chorus says, Let me tell you about my Jesus, so let me tell you about my Jesus, all right? He knows my name. He saved my life. He saved my soul. He's changed my life. I'd like to say uh, thank you to the pastor right here. He told me to move around a little bit and stuff like that, so I'm working on that. And I've been watching my buddy's holding the microphone here. This is my third time I've done this. So, uh, he's blessed me. He's blessed my family. He's filled me with his spirit. He put his word in my mouth. He's restored relationships for me. Like my son is 19 years old, and I haven't seen him in about 10 years. I seen him last Saturday, and he gave me the time of day. I was praying for that for a couple of years. So God does hear you pray that he does. Answer your prayer. He will restore a relationship for you. He will take care of something for you. He's got me out of drugs. I've been clean now. I've been clean now for a year. And uh, next month, I've only been in this program here for a little over two and a half months. So while I was in the penitentiary, I decided to start honoring God. My buddy and I that started this gang up, you know, it was a group of white guys, but um, he started honoring God. And I watched God move in his life. And while I was still doing the same things that I was supposed to be doing, God blessed him. And I watched the move of God in his life, and then so I remembered that. And so I started, whenever I got moved from Miller Prince to Miller, I started honoring God. And it's, a, it's a testimony that said, if you honor God, you will honor me back. I promise you, honor God. I swear you will. I don't know if that's what you guess me. I know I swear on an oath. I just promise you, you got to honor me back. Listen, so like he's helped me stop smoking cigarettes. He's put a teen challenge in my life. I was praying about teen challenge while I was in federal prison about coming here, you know. It, it wasn't just a, like that, get in there. It was a, to the process there. Listen, he smoothed so many mountains for me in my life, it's unreal. You know, I was reading something the other day about a mountain. You know, only God can move a mountain. You can't move a mountain. You can move a mountain. You move a mountain through God. You know, you got mountains in your life, or whatever it may be. You know, you can't move them. You know, I tried that. It don't work. Um, he's protected me from so many troubles more than I probably know. I, I, that's just going on saying I was going to join, man. I was more than enough time people were trying to get at me, you know, once you come so far up and uh, you know people are out to get you. And plus the devil's out to get you. And he's out to get you and you're out on the street at night in the daytime or wherever I hear many protecting me all the time. He brought me back to life because I was dead all around, physically and spiritually when I was on the road and I was sick. I remember one guy came up to me and said, Man, you look like you're about to die. And I was like, man, what's going on? I thought I had cancer or something like that. So I went weigh myself on the scale. 
155 and 210 now, but I was I was just sitting from a, an adversary trying to kill me, you know, they were trying to kill me spiritually, you know, but I'm back to life now, thank you, Jesus. I see evidence all over my life in Jesus' name. I, I, you would never see me on this buildings right here. Uh, it's just, just a, and this is a, a humbling experience, and I appreciate y'all you know, giving me the opportunity to do so. He's put a new song in my heart. So let me let's, let's just smile, church, and glorify God. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Man, he's healed me. He delivered me. He's answered my prayers. Some with a yes and some with a no, but he definitely hears y'all prayers. Believe that. He definitely hears y'all. He's been there for nobody else was. And if I get to talk to you, Fat, you're to slow me down a little bit, all right? He's given me a hope and a future, like it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. But he's given me a hope and a future. He says, surely there's a hope and a future for you. There is, you know. Um, the vision is to, you, know, you being, you know, a man of God. You know, I'm a, I want to be a man towards God and then a man of God. You know, I want to be on this side one day. I want to be, you know I mean? That's my vision. That's my future and my hope right there. Uh, he's been my rear and my thrower. His word has been my shield and my sword. And what a mighty sword has given me. That Bible right there is your sword right there. You know, praise is your sword. Prayer is your sword. You know, lifting up the name of Jesus is your sword. You know, if you don't know any scripture, just say it in the name of Jesus, you know. And the adversary is trying to get you. He's forgiven me. He's forgiven all of me. He's given me grace when I didn't deserve it. He brought me up out the pit. He's placed my feet on the firm ground. He's been my rehabilitation. For real, he's been my rehabilitation. And I don't know 12 steps, and I know that the one step, that's just giving it all to Jesus and letting the rest of it hang out, and he'll take care of it all. He's given me more than enough reason to praise him, to thank him, to glorify him, to love him, to believe in him. And I have no shame to proclaim him as my Savior, because Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You know, let me tell you about my Jesus. He protects me. He comforts me. He walks with me even when I'm dragging my feet. He walks, you know, he walks with me even when I'm dragging my feet. You know, he even carries me when I feel like I ain't got it in me no more. That's real right there. He chastises me because I'm his child. He loves me because I know I can do better. He cared about me even when I didn't care about him. I thank you for that, Jesus. He's still walking. I'm still walking in his blessings. I don't even fully realize it. He's been good to me. He still fights for me. He hedges me and my family and those I care about and the people I prayed about. Like I told him in the first service, I prayed about them. I prayed about y'all. So I guarantee he's got y'all in the heads right now. I prayed about it. I believe that. You know, he's made me in right standing with him and imputing the gift of righteousness upon me. You know, you can't do nothing about that. You can't sit here and dance on one foot and tap your head on and whatever else you do that, you know, and try to work your way into God. The only way is that God can put you in right standing with him is by you just believing in his testimony and it's the word of God and that Jesus is the Son of God and you died on the cross for our sins so you can have a Savior in life. You know, that's your righteousness right there. Right? You got to put you in the right standing with your gift right there. Do you know him? Some of y'all here, do y'all know Jesus? Just because you're sitting here on me and you know Jesus, I've been sitting there before. I've been to church before. I'm just sobbing on that. I know Jesus. I, I thought I did. So some of the things I told y'all about are just the tip of the iceberg, many, many ways that Jesus is, and it's still continually working in my life. Jesus and his word, and he is the word, and his word has blessed me to experience this as well. I've experienced love, joy, peace, and patience, and long-suffering, meekness, kindness, and gentleness. These are his fruits and fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22, and 23. Some of those, some of those uh, fruit of the Spirit is tough to, it's tough, tough to go through, you know what I mean? I told him earlier that I thought I could do this, you know, one at a time, and I tried to do a study on I'm going to try to love, and I'm going to try to be me. It don't work that way for the Holy Spirit has to produce those in you as you walk with Him. It doesn't, it's not something you can do on your own. You can't even do nothing on your own. Like, if you try to do it on your own, this is going to be a tough, something like running that wall. It ain't going to move. It ain't going to move until God moves in your life and starts producing that fruit of the Spirit in you. So anyhow, I'd like to thank you for allowing me your time to share my testimony and how God is working in my life. And again, I'd like to give a huge thanks to your church, you know, this Riverside Baptist and 14 Challenge and their services providing the platform, like, you know, and people like, you know, Joe and, and Gary, who's not here today, and, you know, and Steve, who's an intern, and Bobby over here, you know, and, you know, and, and the rest of the staff, and because of what they're doing again, and through the Disciple Approach Program and Teen Challenge, this is a Disciple pro, you know, Program. If you got some family members or somebody you know, love or care about, you know, get them and call up Joe and, and get them right, you know, because it's, uh, you know, the, the 12 steps ain't going to help nobody. It's going to have to work through God. It's the only thing that's going to work, you know what I mean? Even in the 12 step program, I heard he had a higher power. Well, hey, I got a higher power too in the name of Jesus, you know? You know, that's your higher power there. That's your, that, that's, on, that's your rehabilitation. It ain't no joke, you know? Hey, this is just a training field right here. For me, when I step out with my armor of God on, Get ready because the adversary is coming. We call him Rambo here. Some of my buddies we call him Rambo. Rambo is coming. You know, he's coming here in a minute. You know what I mean? Because uh, you know, 
the electricity says that we are all one, one mind and one accord. And so we are all each other on our God as well as the Word. Um, the Teen Challenge program here is God led and ordained. Some of us are mummers or grumblers sometimes, but it's tough, man. You know, I promise you it's tough. But we have to learn submission and sub submit to authority. Submit to the authority that God places in, in, in line for everything. There's an authority here, you know, and there's always an authority somewhere. And you just got to submit to it, you know. So, anyway, it takes a bunch of small pictures to make a big picture. And I went to the Adult Teen Challenge Center doing in Savannah. For older men like myself and younger men, like the one you just performed in Tyler, is 20 years old, he's just a kid, and I got a son that age, you know. And you know, I know some of y'all got kids that age too, you don't want to see them, you know, in prison or on drugs, you know. Um, so we need Jesus in our life. You know? So all this, this, these smaller pictures are just a big picture for what God had in mind. And this is what God had in mind. And I thank God for people like the David Wilkerson, you're talking about the Starbucks program back in way back when, and Jim Farrakis is over this uh, Savannah. Teen Challenge program. And these people stay the course with the vision that God placed on their heart, not taking no for an answer, but staying obedient to the Holy Spirit. You think, answer something, you think if you come to church that, uh, that that's all it takes? I mean, I appreciate y'all coming today. You know, God appreciates that, but it's just more than it's a, it's a, it's a be doers of the word, not just hear it only, you know, do the work. Hear, I'm just here to work, do the work. You know what I mean? So if you read your Bible, you be doers of the word, it's, and, you, and the Holy Spirit, you know what I mean? You got to be obedient to that, you know, because of, because of their obedience or your obedience, you know what I'm saying? God having a reason for all things has now helped in the restoration of me through a teen challenge right now. You know, and not only me, he, 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 they reached out and touched my family. He's still rooting for me, you know what I mean? He's touched these guys' families, you know what I mean? He's touching me all right now. Uh, they said this is a ministry, so I, I guess we're ministering to guys. He said ministering was uh, just giving, you know, just, you know, just, you know just doing something for your fellow, fellow person, you know. So anyway, he says, uh, you know, for these people here that, you know, God can work a mighty work through them, you know, men like Mr. Wilson, Mr. Farrakis, you, me, they can work a mighty work through us to help somebody. If you can just disciple somebody, Jesus said, go ye into all nations and make disciples. Discipling somebody is just sitting down with them and talking to them about the word of God, being positive will, building them up in his order. You know, there's many spiritual gifts, there's many things that God can work through you. Like you were saying earlier, something, somebody's just, I read the Bible today, and he said, I'd rather be a, just a doorkeeper in your kingdom than to be an attendant with you, you know what I mean? If it's just being a, you know, helping and deciphering, doing the work of God, but it's a small thing, you know. Anyhow, in the beginning of this testimony, I told you there were two verses of scripture that I stand on, which one, first one was Proverbs 24 and 6, and the second one being uh, Philippians 4 and 19. It says, my God will meet all your needs. He will meet them and keep them in his wonderful riches because you belong to Jesus. And it says, Christ Jesus. And I thank Jesus for that. I hope you tell somebody about my Jesus. And your Jesus and how he's changed your life, and maybe how he's, you know, show up to me, tell me how he's changed mine. I thank y'all for your time. In Jesus' name. Okay, Riverview Baptist, uh, thank you so much for having us. And, and we love you. God bless you, Pastor. I've been reminded this morning, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. <clears throat> and I've been reminded today, they're recipients of grace. For those of us sitting out here that know the Lord Jesus, we're recipients of grace. And the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And we all have to come by the way of the cross in order to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And I never want to end the service without giving people an opportunity to come to Jesus. And you do that by admitting that you're a sinner for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you believe that Jesus Christ died, paid the punishment for your sin and for my sin. You believe that He rose again from the dead. And then the Bible says that you call out to Him, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you done that? I'm not asking you if you're a regular church member, but have you asked Jesus into your heart to save you? Have you really been changed from the inside out? If not, in just a moment, we're going to stand, and I'm going to ask you to do something pretty bold, because Jesus says... He wants you to go public with Him. As soon as we start singing, 
I want you to come say, Alan, I, I want to be saved this morning. I'd love to pray with you. And, uh, and so you can experience forgiveness of sin. Your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life. You can have abundant life and eternal life. Perhaps some just have a heavy burden that you carry. I invite you, when we start singing, just to come to this altar and lay it at the altar and leave it with Jesus. Perhaps some of you have been visiting and you're saved and you know this is the church where God wants you to be a member of. We invite you to come today. All right? We're going to stand. If you want to be saved, you can come on, okay? And uh, I'll tell you what, guys, you help us. Uh, Randy's coming. We're going to sing just as I am. All right? Let's sing it. Just as I am. Thank you. 